All right, everyone, it's now possible that there's about to be a big fucking problem in the world, which is that there may be Ebola in Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. Now, I, I had to look it up because I'm not familiar with Tanzania particularly, but this is a city of 4.3 million people. That is, it's uh, four times the size of Goma, um, eight times the size roughly of Batembo, and considerably larger than Beni, which I think has like 120,000. That would make it by and large easily the largest place uh, that had an Ebola infection. Now, this story is actually dated from 10 days ago. Unfortunately, what happened, I guess the World Health Organization expressed concern that they had heard that there was a case of Ebola in Dar es Salaam, a person died. They had been from Uganda, they had Ebola, they went to Tanzania, they died there in the hospital. There are now two new unconfirmed cases there. That would be a disaster waiting to happen. Dar es Salaam is considerably larger considerably more interconnected to the rest of the world trade-wise, both by sea and by air, has much higher population density. We're talking a megacity. We're not talking something the size of Boston. We're talking 4.3 million people is a large city, especially by East African standards. If Ebola has entered an urban enclave of that density and size, and it's not immediately contained, if it manages to break free, let's say it does, it could kill everyone in the fucking city. How are you going to contain it? Are you going to cordon off street to street? Are you going to have martial law in the most populated and, and former capital of uh, Tanzania, apparently? I don't think that the government... The problem is the governments of these countries are reluctant to do things like that. They're afraid of instability because they've seen what's happened to all of their cohorts when there's any instability. The people get overthrown and killed. There could be instability. They're afraid of getting ousted. Uh, by some sub-movement, you know, that's politically favored by the, the people who have moved in to help with the epidemic. They're, they're, they get paranoid. Part of it's the problem of U.S. and Soviet foreign policy within some of these countries throughout decades of time, constantly ousting people. Oh, this person's a power-mad dictator. Let's replace him with our power-mad dictator, basically. This has caused a lot of distrust in the third world, and it's been now, now we see the problem. It's sort of like when the United States decided to arm uh, what would become the, 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 the fucking the Mujahideen in order to fight the Soviets. They did a great job against those fucking commies. There are statues made out of debilitated tanks stacked one on top of the other that they go and uh, celebrate every year. That's wonderful. The problem is then we saw what happened, then we get 9-11. Our foreign policies, the great powers of the world and parts of the third world, have now led to a situation where you've got rapidly advancing infrastructure and travel and massively inclining population density in areas where there's almost no native medical investment now. The population and density is growing far more quickly in these countries than the medical apparatuses of the rest of the world are able to trickle in any resources to help them. Eventually, you're going to end up with an epidemic to end epidemics that kills its way across the Africa and probably into Asia, probably goes worldwide. Death toll will be highest in the third world, naturally, because of medical apparatus being lacking, but it will kill many, many people outside of it. It will happen. It's inevitable. It's a matter of time. It'll probably happen within our lifetimes. If you're 20, 30 years old right now, I'm telling you, there is a good chance of another major world pandemic that kills 10, 20% of the world population. You will not even be able to bury all the bodies. The Black Death will have nothing on it. I'm not even trying to be apocalyptic. Dude, look at human history. It happens over and over. We've never had density like this before, especially not in parts of the world with some of these mutation-prone tropical diseases. Now, I'm not saying that Ebola is the one to do this. Ebola in its current form can't go pandemic. It's not able to spread enough. Even in an area like this particular city, it would get to the point where it was killing a lot of people, but unless people panic and flee into the hinterlands, it, you know, and then the density is lower, it stops transmitting as easily, you probably don't even have a regional pandemic. But it's already kind of a regional sub-pandemic. Now, they were hoping to get this contained. The number of new cases in Congo was on the decline. Now it may have hit an urban area. Look, all of the infected areas combined, do they even have a population equivalent to this one city? Now, this isn't proven. We don't have... The World Health Organization claims there was an Ebola case. It is likely that they know better than the government of Tanzania, because if the government of Tanzania... Let, let's look at it this way. I'm El Presidente of Tanzania. There's been an Ebola case. Mr. President, there's Ebola in our country. What the fuck am I supposed to do? If I say, oh yeah, we've got Ebola, sorry everyone, but our biggest city has Ebola, am I not worried that people will flee and take the Ebola with them? 
Am I not worried that I might get ousted? Some people might get superstitious, think I brought Satan on them or something. It's entirely possible. Imagine what would happen here. Imagine, remember, before you get too judgmental, oh, well, haha, that only happens in the third world. Happened here, right in the United States. Remember when that doctor had Ebola and they brought him back to Houston and the whole city was basically vacated for a day? Nobody was outside? I was watching live streams of that shit out people's window. Oh, here's a normal day in Houston. There's thousands of people milling around. Here's today. Nothing. Nobody. Imagine if it had escape containment. Yes, there would be people who would have fled from Houston in their fucking cars and potentially taken disease with them. Humans are all the same when it comes to such things. Self-preservation kicks in. You just don't realize how dangerous it really is. And some people say, well, it doesn't matter. Oh, the world sucks. Let it end. It wouldn't even end the world. I mean, even mankind would still be here. It's just we'd be crippled and fucked up for another couple of generations. I suppose you might look forward to lower density in some of the urban enclaves. I guess you could have a mini renaissance or something. The world population density would still be high even if the death toll was 90%, unfortunately. <laughs> you know, looking on the bright side of a shit situation, yeah, okay, well, land would be cheaper. They'd need somebody to farm it. I'd probably grab a farm, too. Guess what I'm growing? Leeks. Anyway, Tanzania may have had Ebola cases. Now, nor you know, when I first read it, I was like, oh, so some village on the border got Ebola. You know, they'll probably be able to contain it, hopefully. Otherwise, you might see some more cases. It's bad enough as it is. No, it didn't hit their most populated city. Now, this person from you... By the way, can I ask this, if this is indeed true? How did a person from Uganda end up getting there in the first place if they had Ebola? Were they completely asymptomatic? Like, has it mutated so that it's asymptomatic for longer or only has flu-like symptoms for longer? And what about this quarantine effort? You're saying that I'm supposed to trust the government of Tanzania to have properly quarantined an Ebola patient without any outside help whatsoever. I'm supposed to trust that. I don't. That's the problem. So we'll see if there are more cases there. I mean, can, can you imagine? Let's say if they keep it hush-hush, they swear up and down to the WHO, no Ebola here. I don't know what you're talking about. There's no Ebola. And then all of a sudden, like a dozen more people are infected. Oh man, it'd be crazy. Might as well just, we might as well stop fighting leprosy and, and bring smallpox back. Just fuck it. Stop fighting polio. Let everyone get sick. Meanwhile, you've got this sort of desperate situation over there, and then we've got anti-vaxxers over here. Dear God. Yeah, we're probably doomed as a species. We're basically like less hairy versions of apes with nuclear weapons. That's what humankind is. That's about all. Peace out.